Live from Washington, D.C., it's The Q, covering AWS Public Sector Summit 2017. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and its partner ecosystem. Well, welcome back to our nation's capital, where we continue our coverage here on The Cube of the AWS Public Sector Summit 2017. Some 10,000 strong in attendance this week here in the Walter Washington Convention Center, uh, just, just about a mile from the, the, the U.S. Capitol. John Walsh, John Furrier. John, do you, do you feel the energy of the, of, the, of the centerpiece of the political universe? It's hot here in D.C. It is hot. It's a, it's a, it's a pressure cooker, um, yeah. the humidity. But it's not global warming, we know that, because you know, climate change is... Climate change is not real, that's from it's what right, I heard. That's what we've been told. The, the problem with D.C. is it's a data lake that's turned into a data swamp, so someone really needs to drain that data swamp. Well, you know to help us do that? You know who's going to help us do that? <laughs> Amazon Web Services. Uh, Marlon McFate's going to help us do that. He is the technical leader of the Advanced Technology Group at the office of the CTO at Riverbed. And Marlon, thank you for being with us here on theCUBE. Your first time, I believe. Yes, it is my first time on theCUBE. Oh, so you're a CUBE rookie. Yes, CUBE rookie. Good to have you aboard. I nice. appreciate it, thanks. Tell us a little bit first about Riverbed, uh, about, uh, about what you do there, specifically what you do there and what the company's mission is overall. Uh, absolutely, so um, I work for the Advanced Technology Group. The Advanced Technology Group works underneath the Office of the CTO. Uh, there's actually two groups that work under the Office of the CTO. My group, the Advanced Technology Group, and another one called the Strategic, Strategic Technology Group. The ATG Group. Uh, the one that I belong to, we focus on being the subject matter experts of our products. Uh, I think there's about nine of us now, and we all focus on different products, right? Riverbed's grown from a company of being just the WAN optimization company to really being the performance uh, company, right? Whether that be visibility, whether it be optimization, whether it be uh, network optimization. Each one of us focuses on a different piece. I predominantly focus on our WAN optimization, our Steel Connect product, and at times our Steel Fusion project, which is the combined edge product. Hey, take, take a minute about so Steel, Steel Connect. Edge. Yeah, tell us what that's all about. Steel Connect. Uh, yeah. Steel Connect is uh, not actually our, our most recent uh, um, uh, product to come to market. Uh, we have a couple of visibility products that have come out recently, but Steel Connect addresses the idea that we have been doing networking for the same way, say, you know, 1993 beyond, right? Uh, we were still doing it the same way. Everything within our industry, whether you take a look at virtualization, whether you take, take a look at cloud, whether or not you take a look at storage, yeah. right? Everything has changed substantially in how we do it, and this brings that change to networking. The idea is, is when you think about servers, you say, I no longer want to think about you know, hardware. I never want to think about that. I want to think about resources. Maybe I don't even want to worry about operating systems. I only want to worry about containers, right? Now when it comes to networking, I don't necessarily want to have to worry about each individual piece within my network. I want it to be orchestrated and controlled centrally, and what I tell it to do, I want it to do. I, mean, this is the challenge. I shouldn't have to do that. That's the challenge we heard Werner Vogels on stage here at Amazon Public Sector Summit here in DC say, hey, it's a new normal. Uh, we had another uh, entrepreneur on just before you from Fug, Fug who said, hey, it's inevitably, it's, the world of the future and it's inher uh, uh, inherently different or intrinsically different in cloud than it is on-premise uh, with enterprises. So the question for you is, what is the use case that you guys are winning at because the cloud is impacting federal government and public sector, but a lot of times they have old antiquated systems like back in 1993, 94. So they're moving fast to commercialize, to modernize. That's the focus. How do you guys help them? What's the big uh, linchpin for you guys and that goal and mission of the customer. All right, so uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, the government has been here, or the government or public sector uh, as a whole has been moving to the cloud you know, quite quickly here recently, right? Uh, we've seen this move more on the commercial side first, obviously, uh, and now in the public sector. One of the very large use cases that we address is app uh, the ability to provision for your applications, right? Some of the characteristics that you find in commercial worlds, such as I want to use internet as transport, you don't see as much in public sector, but you do see, I can spin up an application in the cloud. If you go to your cloud person and say, how long would it take me to get application B? They could possibly come back to you and say, well, could, would this afternoon be okay? Right, can you provision a network like that? Can you get uh, the, the, the policy in place for users? Could you get the connectivity, could you get any of that in place in the same amount of time? That is a use case that SD-WAN addresses without having to 
rip up, take out the network that you already have, which is the physical network, or what we refer to as the underlay, being able to give you that flexibility on top of that network. And the, thing, the big thing that customers have a challenge on is the other focus, that's DevOps trend, of programmable infrastructure is another one. So that they want to make it programmable. Right. So how do you guys fit into that? Because one of the things that we hear is, look, I have developers, all they want to do is have infrastructure just works as code, that's all I need for whatever use case. Yeah, we actually see that uh, DevOps is actually one of the, probably the first movers to the cloud for the public sector, right? Um, with our, uh, pretty much every single one of our products, whether or not we're talking about Steel Connect, Steel Head, Steel Central, any one of them, uh, there's a RESTful API for every single one of them. So you can actually go in and utilizing you know, a, a very easy scripting, a RESTful API directly itself, and spin up whole environments, and then spin them down if you wanted to do that. So it fits very, very nicely into that DevOps world. Do you have Steel Edge yet? Steel Edge? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's my okay. No, I think, I think. Copyright uh, right on the cube. Yeah, <laughs> it might be a, a razor company that might have that, I don't know. Well, the edge of the network is, is huge, and this Absolutely. is where we're talking about, you know, as you guys deal with, you know, SD-WAN, I mean, come on, wide area networks, you, don't be, you can't get any more edgier than that. You right. guys have a core competency in this. So, How do you guys look at the edge in IOT and all these use cases popping around? Well, we do actually have a product that has edge in it, with Steel Fusion Edge. Uh, we can address that in a, uh, a couple different ways. I want to make sure that I understood your question, though. Uh, your question was around IOT specifically. Well, how do you guys look at the edge? And tr the, the trends right now are simply hyped up right now. People have edge, edge, intelligent edge is a big message we're hearing from others. Um, IOT is an edge application, whether it's industrial edge with machinery, sensor networks, uh, mm -hmm. public safety, surveillance. Yep. All this is edge devices. It still ends up in the end being, you know, and that has, we've, we've heard the, the change from people calling it branch to calling it edge, which is probably you know, pretty apropos, right? Uh, but really in the end what it comes down to is connectivity, right? So if yeah. I have IoT sensors in a warehouse, uh, whether or not I have an application, whether or not I have a group of users, whether or not I have mobile users, in the end what it really comes down to is connectivity. Yeah. And we all. And it, power. Yeah, and well, yeah. <laughs> but we all, you know, especially with you know, our cell phones, right? We have come you know, pretty much to the point where we expect our data and our connectivity to be there at all times, right? And that's one of the things SD-WAN addresses. Uh, whether it be our directly our SD-WAN products, Steel Connect, or whether or not it has some, uh, 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 works with some of the pieces that move further into the LAN architecture like our wireless access points, our switching, right? So you can imagine here, right? I can provide policy for my IoT devices, I can provide that policy one time at an organizational or a agency level, I can have that policy filter down all the way down to the access point, and now the access point might be my access point to my IoT or to my users. So in the end, it still comes to connectivity. Marlon, what's the, some of the use cases or scenarios you've been involved with with customers where it's been super exciting from an architectural standpoint, where you guys are doing some cutting edge things? Like is it more on the network side? Is it software? Is it edge? I mean, I'm trying to get a sense of, can you share a personal perspective? Absolutely, so um, one of the ones that we're working on right now that I think is probably the most exciting is uh, combining some aspects, you, you, you could call it NFE, you could call it uh, SD-WAN, you could call it gray box. Uh, what I like to call it is just a, a combined edge piece, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which encompasses both the Steel Connect piece, which handles your firewall you know, uh, uh, um, characteristics, your identity management characteristics, uh, built into that some switching, uh, virtualization, so you can run other products on there. What the customer really wanted to end up doing was they had school systems, that, a school system that was in a very far away place uh, and that school system, they were putting in a router, a switch, an access point, you know, all these different That's little expensive. pieces and devices, right? What we did was we were able to take that design and crunch it down into basically one box, right? They have enough switch ports, they have the ability to run virtual machines because they said that they had a server here or there. They had their virtualized mm -hmm. Steel Connect gateway which gives them the firewall capability, gives them the routing capability. And this is all combined in a box that already has the uh, the, uh, the WAN optimization built in. So they get everything that they would have had on site in one box. Is there something to, to working, you bring up education as an example, but in that space overall, in the, in the .gov or .edu space, that's you know, separate and aside from commercial partners or commercial relationships that different concerns, different priorities, and yet they're using the same technologies. Yeah, most certainly. The, the only thing that I could really say from um, uh, using Technology, right? I mean, there are some pockets where different technology, like far off weird technology is, 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 is utilized. 
but I would say that they are uh, the public sector, schools, federal, government, Intel, they're all using a lot of the same technology, right? It's when they adopt it. When do they bring it uh, 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 into their environment and then what are the special characteristics of their environment? So for example, what I said earlier, right? Your commercial customers are looking at utilizing SD-WAN to move maybe completely off of MPLS. It's probably not something that we're going to see within the public sector. Yeah. Right, they want to want to still use some sort of private networking. I do have some customers that are utilizing pro, uh, public internet, but then they are tunneling in an yeah. overlay back to an MPLS entry point to get back into their their uh, uh, their cloud. We just have interesting uh, uh, yeah. requirements, whether that yeah. be a trusted internet connection, whether or not that be. JRSS, yeah. we have different security requirements in the public sector. Well, I love some of what you're doing, John. You get all that MPLS stuff there, yeah. tunneling. So, I, I got the first four. <laughs> um, I want to jump in, double down on that, because it's an interesting conversation, because yep. the whole trend right now is hybrid cloud on the enterprise side. Absolutely. Which is a leading indicator to the government, a little bit lagging on that, so whatever that translates to in terms of hybrid or legacy, it's going to be some, somewhat similar, I believe. Mm -hmm. But really, multi-cloud is a trend that people are talking about a little, it's super hyped up, but it's not yet real. The thing that's holding multi-cloud back, not multi-cloud in the sense I got a workload over here and a workload over there, not about moving resources around the network, yep. data, compute, whatnot, is latency. Huge problem. Yep. So you mentioned MPLS and all this tunneling. There's still the latency problems. How do you get the laws of physics down to the point where you can actually have those kinds of latencies. What is Riverbed doing? Can you share some insight to that direction? Because that's the holy grail right now. That's the last hurdle. Right. Uh, and then we'll get it all in silicon. It's still the final hurdle. But latency is critical. Mm -hmm. So uh, problem number one there, right? Even if it is cloud to cloud uh, in that example, right? Is first, you know, how do I get an, uh, a WAN optimization device? Something that can optimize that traffic for me. Something that can affect my latency for me into that environment. Riverbed has worked tirelessly to get that in there, right? But to your point, you can't change how an electron flies, right? <laughs> speed of light is the speed of light. Uh, you're not going to get an electron to move any faster. So what Riverbed developed, it's still uh, very relevant today, is the ability to, uh, instead of change your latency, mitigate the negative effects of your latency, right? So if I, you know, or have to make a trip, around it, right, or right. work around it, a absolutely. And you can do that at the application uh, application level, absolutely. Program around it. But there are a lot of protocols out there that aren't necessarily optimized for that longer latency environment, right? Yeah. So what we do is, is uh, or the adage is, is the trip never taken, right? <laughs> the shortest trip. Right? <laughs> so if I have to, you know, not to get into the the weeds or anything like that, but if I have to make a thousand round trips to accomplish something, right? and I can put something in there that understands what I was getting, right, that data that I was getting each one of those times, and I can take less trips, well then that just made that faster. So if I have a thousand round trips and it takes a minute to do, and now I can do 10 round trips and it only took 10 seconds, or six seconds it's if we're doing like math, It's kind of like here in DC, That's you're local, and I noticed that coming from Dulles Airport, they have surge pricing on the toll roads. That's basically private right. networking right there. That's right. You know, least cost path routing. Although I was beginning <laughs> to think it's very expensive. Side, I was in the, you know. <laughs> I, I thought Marlon was more like describing my trips to the hardware store on the weekends. <laughs> a thousand round trips be a lot more economical. Yep. You but go, you're right. It is if you're off the road. It, it is about a network. If you're off the packets aren't on the network. Yep. Yeah. That saves some room for someone. And else. now you have it's, more more traffic that you can hear more traffic at, well, you at actually higher speeds. Could, could so you get two benefits. One is the increase in speed, but the other is the the, the perceived capacity increase of your network, right? right? Yeah. Um, and, and we accomplish these things through compression, which is really, really simple. I think you know, compression is, uh, is a must, right? Um, but through our data duplication. Data duplication is I've seen these patterns before, and it's the byte level. It's, we're not talking about an object, I haven't seen a file, no. I've seen these byte level patterns before, I don't need to resend them. Yeah. And in a traditional network or a traditional applications that you see pretty much you know, in any organization, right? we typically can get somewhere between 50 and 80, if not sometimes 90% reduction total in traffic. My final question before we're wrapping up the segment here is, yeah. share with the folks, take a minute to talk to the audience about what you're doing here with Riverbed at the show, mm -hmm. and what they should know about the current Riverbed. I know you guys are trying to transformation yourselves. Yes. Give a quick plug, go ahead. Absolutely, so what we're specifically doing here, or one of the pieces that is a differentiator for us in our SD-WAN, is we went ahead and we thought, why couldn't we make an AWS VPC or a cloud instance one of my edge sites, right? 
Connecting into the cloud, there's many different ways to do it, but why couldn't we make a very simple way of doing that? Why couldn't I take the technology that I'm already putting in place at my data centers, I'm already putting in place at my branch offices, why can't I utilize that to create a, se a secure connection into my VPCs? And to your point actually earlier, one of the things that's uh, also interesting was cloud to cloud. Why couldn't I take that same technology yeah. and connect multiple clouds? Whether they be private cloud or two public clouds or two, you know, connect it's them just, all it's together. Just networking. And take the best of all, <laughs> you know, of all worlds, right? Yeah. Uh, the best from each uh, and make the best infrastructure that I possibly can. So what we're showing off here from a Steel Connect perspective is our ability to do that. I can take an AWS VPC, actually I can take all, I think there's 16 regions within AWS and I can interconnect them in less than 10 minutes with a click of a button. And then in back into my infrastructure. So that and then we also have brought uh, Eternity which is one of our visibility products uh, that is that has basically rounded out our visibility play within within the market. We had the network, we had the app, we had the database. Now we have the end user's computer. All right. Well, if you could interconnect me to my home in ten minutes, <laughs> I'm a client. I'd be I'd be sold. I'd be all over. I'm going to be in the same traffic as you. Later. I'm not that far from here, but it might as well be another day. No. Marlon, thanks for the time. Absolutely. Good to have you pleasure. on the cube. All right. Thanks. Hopefully, Marlon, I can do it again. A riverbed has joined us here on the cube. We'll be live with more from Washington D.C. Right after this.